This is a Buckley Bones dice machine that plays the game of craps. The left side window is your come out roll. Down here this plate says that if you roll a 7 or 11 you'll get paid two coins for putting in one. That's an instant winner. If you get two, three, or twelve on your come out roll you lose and the game stops. If you get a four, five, six, eight, nine, or ten on your come out roll then these dice will stay put. You'll get to keep playing and dice will come out in the right hand side. If you match then you will win. If you get a seven then you lose. And we have different amounts of pay. Uh, four, eight, nine, and ten will pay eight to one. Six and eight pay two to one. Put a quarter in, crank the handle. Snake eyes are lost. That's a ten, so I get to keep playing. And I got a seven, so I lost. Eight, I get to keep playing. Six, keep playing. Seven, lost. Six. So now I'm playing for a six. Seven lost. Playing for ten. Seven lost. All right, that was an 11, which was a winner, so I got paid two quarters. With the mechanism out of the case, you can see that it's not one set of dice, but it's actually several sets of dice in a wheel. And as I crank the handle, I set this pair of dice back in its space and then bring up another set. Each set of dice is predetermined to show you a certain number and that will never change. So that's how the machine knows where or what the, the dice pattern is. I have an 8 so I'm going to get to keep going now. Until I either get another 8 or a 7. And there's eight, so I won. So to walk through this mechanism and follow its operation, what I'll do is coin it up. And then as I start to crank the handle, through a rod that comes all the way through to here to this arm, this arm pushes down on this cam here which is winding the clock which is on the other side of this plate. So pushing this down winds the clock, it puts the dice back in and it also sets up this bar which is important. This bar is going to come in handy in a minute. I'm going to stop the clock and kick off the reels. Now all set up for a losing combination, which is 12. That's going to be a 12 coming out. So with the 12 in position, if I let the clock start coming back on its own, this bar is going to move. And I have several levers here which are all being held back on the top of this bar. This lever has a shorter arm than the others so as this bar moves forward 
this is going to be the first lever to let go. I'm just going to let the clock go very slowly. Okay, here comes the bar. This lever will drop first. As that lever dropped, an arm on the other side engaged and locked this in to position 12. When that arm let go, this finger right there dropped into this star wheel and locked this in position. So my combination for 12 is now set to come out. The next thing that will happen as this bar continues to move forward is that it will be pushing on this lever and it will release the arms up here which will throw the 12 into viewing position. So watch this raise. And it threw that out into position. Then the last thing that happens is these two arms will let go. The length of these are longer than this first one, so they're still holding on to this bar, but they're about to drop right there. Now when these two levers let go, the one on the right hand side is looking for a hole in this drum. See those slots there? If there was a seven that have come out and your dice combination was seven, then this right hand lever would have been allowed to drop much farther down and go up inside one of these holes on the right hand side and this lever is what's detecting that you have a 7 or an 11 winner. But because I got 12 which is a loser, this one is allowed to go into one of the holes but only part of the way in. It only drops in there about a quarter of an inch and it hits a peg. And that's important because if you have one of your other numbers like 4, 5, 6, 8, or 10 that you're going to continue rolling on, this same lever drops in to the hole, but it's allowed to drop way farther in, and this lever moves down much more. But it just barely dropped in, hit a peg, and it knows that that's a losing combination. As the machine was cycling, and we saw that our 12 was losing combination, this handle had not come all the way back up yet. We still had this lever here being held back by this stop, and this rotates. The last thing that the clock is going to do when I let it go is continue to push this back, raise this up, and let the handle come all the way back to the full upright position so that we can put another coin in. Now that's a complete cycle. Down here, when I try to crank the handle, this drops in and catches here, and this does not allow me to crank any further. This has to be kept outward so that I can crank past it. And putting a coin in keeps this outward. Here in the front of the mechanism, you can see a little finger wanting to come through this front plate. Because that finger is allowed to come through, it knows that there's not a coin there. And that's why I can't crank the handle. But if I put a coin in, notice how it blocks that so that lever doesn't get to come forward, that finger doesn't come forward as much. And that translates on the side to not falling in here, but letting the arm crank past it. 